Welcome to the first edition of Dirty Dane Looks at Books. Today we're going to be looking at some Forgotten Realms books, and continuing on, we have Chloe. So Chloe, what do we have first? Uh, the first book that you've handed me here is from the Forgotten Realms series, called Spellfire, Chandril Saga Book 1, so I assume there's others. Um, pretty dark graphics, I see the skeleton of a dragon, and a um, gentleman with a shield, he looks like Alexander Skarsgård, and the lady on the front looks like... Um, Squirty Weaver from Aliens, doesn't it? Doesn't she? Sure. The book is by Ed Greenwood, The Fire That Burns. It can lay low a dragon or heal a wounded warrior. It is the most sought after magical power in all Faerun. And it is in the reluctant hands of Shandril of High Moon, a young orphaned kitchen lass. Now she's on the run from half of the evil sorcerers in the land, not to mention their relentless minions. But with the help of a handsome young wizard, some rough and tumble knights of the myth Draenor, and a certain old mage of Shadowdale, she might just manage to stay alive, at least until tomorrow. <gasps> Drama. This was originally published in 1988 by TSR Incorporated, and then again, I guess, republished in 2005 by Wizards of the Coast Incorporated. The Cleric Quintet Collector's Edition by R.A. Salvatore. Yeah? Salvatore. Fancy. And there's a bunch of folks um, riding dragons. Ooh, she thick. Within there, there's five stories within this book. The Cleric Quintet, so uh, Canticle, In Sylvan Shadows, Night Masks, The Fallen Fortress, and The Chaos Curse. So this is copywritten in 1999 by TSR Incorporated um, and 2002 Wizards of the Coast Incorporated. Ari Salvatore's The Cleric Quintet tells the tale of scholar, the scholar priest Catterly, plucked from the halls of the edificant library to fulfill a her heroic quest across the land of Faerun. This one volume collection includes all five of the original novels, complete and unabridged with a new introduction by the author. And quote here, it says, Salvatore shows excellence in using the classic elements, a pleasant dry wit and a narrative gift. Legacy of Drow, Collector's Edition by R.A. South. Legacy of the Drow. What did I say? Legacy of Drow. Oh, Legacy of the Drow, Collector's Edition. And the cover art was by Drom, and the cover art is uh, two people. I really like the archer, Ginger Archer. Yeah, probably a lot of dungeon fighting, I assume. Yeah. What about the Drow? He's the dark elf there. That guy? He's okay. He's wearing fur. Probably not vegan. Um, two swords. What kind of swords are those? Skim tires. Yeah. Are they? Yeah. Hell yeah. I was going to say that or a katana. No. This was originally published in 2003 by Wizards of the Coast Incorporated. Um, is it, again, like five stories in one? I think so. Legacy of the Drow, The Legacy, Starless Night, Siege of Darkness, and Passage to Dawn. No race in all the realms better understands the word vengeance than the drow. Vengeance is their dessert at their daily table, the sweetness they taste upon their smirking lips, as though it was ultimate, the ultimate delicious pleasure. And so hungering did the drow come for me. For the first time in one volume, here is New York Times best-selling author R.A. Salvatore's saga of the battles of dreadful spider queen Lolf and her vicious drow, un, uh, her drow followers against Drizzt Du Erden, one of the most beloved characters in fantasy literature. Well, I've never heard of the fucking guy, so I don't know how beloved he really is. Pretty beloved. Is that true? Yeah. Elminster, the making of a mage. Sick. That kid looks like a little wiener kid. And this magic guy up here with the crazy hand, super legit. He's probably favorite looking character so far. This is by Ed Greenwood. In ancient days, sorcerers sought to learn the one true spell that would give them power over the world and understanding of all magic. The one true spell was a woman. Oh, shit. And her name was Mystera? Okay. And her kisses were wonderful. Damn. That's what priest Hal Halavon Tharnstar had to say. So is this like a review of a character by another fictional character on the back of the book? Yeah. 
Yeah, I think. Interesting. Either that or an author. The author's name is Priest Hallie Von Tharmstar. Okay, it's probably a character. Okay. Is the time before Myth Draenor, when the Heartlands are home to the to barbarians and wicked dragons rule the skies. In these ancient days, Elminster is but a shepherd boy, dreaming of adventure and heroics. When a dragon riding mage lord sweeps down upon him, though, the boy is thrust into a world of harsh realities, corrupt rulers, and evil sorcerers. With patience and grit, Elminster sets about to change all that. The result of this labor is World Reborn and a Mage Made. It was originally published in 1994 by TSR Incorporated and then republished in 2003. The last Mythel anthology. Um, this one's cool. All the elves are fighting. The girls are fighting in a forest. Um, Realms of the Elves. That's not easy to say. Um, edited by Philip Athens, featuring a new Drizzt story by Are Salvatore. This was published in 2006 by Wizards of the Coast Incorporated. The first one we have here is Traitors by Richard Lee Byers. The Staff of Valmaxian by Philip Athens. Necessary Sacrifices by Lisa Smedman. It's like the first female name I've seen so far as well, so good for her. The Greater Treasure, Eric Scott to be. Comrades at Odds by R.A. Salvatore. Tears So White by Ed Greenwood and The Blade Singer's Lesson by Richard Baker. The history of Faroon is written in the following script of the Tel Quasir. The back just reviews the best-selling authors in the Forgotten Realms creator is Ed Greenwood. The Year of Rogue Dragon's Scribe by Richard Lee Byers and the talented newcomer Eric Scott Deby. The story of the elves of Faroon stretches from the dawn of history to the battle of the future of a world in constant upheaval. Windwalker by Elaine Cunningham. Starlight and Shadows 3. So I assume that's a series? Yeah. Okay, and this is the third one? Yeah. And there's two beautiful ladies on the cover? Yeah. One of them has a crow. Uh, a crow? Oh, yeah. That guy? One of them's holding a crow. Crossing the wild realms of Faerun in search of adventure, the dark elf princess, Lyriel Baneray, and her companion, Theodor Theodor, find themselves in the barbarian's homeland of rash men. In a land ruled by witches, Lyriel must disguise herself lest she spark the people's hatred of dark elves. And racism and fantasy worlds. Yet from the deep tunnels of the underdark, glittering eyes and a mind twisted by malice are watching her every move, preparing for vengeance. Here's a quote here from the creator of Forgotten Realms, Ed Greenwood. It says here, Elaine Cunningham, makes me care about her characters. When she writes about the Forgotten Realms, she can see inside my head somehow and capture the things the way I imagine them. She makes the fantastic real. It's really good accolades there, Elaine. This one was published in 2004 by Wizards of the Coast Incorporated. Elminster's daughter. Oh, so Elminster grew up and now he has his daughter. And this is super dramatic. Um, that's probably Elminster and that's his daughter about to stab him in the back. She's some sort of rogue or thief. Yeah. I don't think that's Elminster, but maybe, but I don't think so. That does not look like him. Elminster is like a mage. That doesn't look like a mage to me. But but the, the girl is Elminster's daughter okay. with the... Uh, little mini scimitar thing or a knife. I don't know. Is she an assassin? I think so. Okay. This was published in 2004 by Wizards of the Coast Incorporated. A woman scorned. Uh-oh. All her life, Narnra of Waterdeep has wondered who her father is. Amid the squalor of the streets, through the danger she faces daily, and as a thief in the City of Splendors, she speculates on whom the mysterious wizard might be who left her mother to raise a fatherless child. Now she has discovered that it's no less a person than Elminster of Shadowdale, mightiest mage in all Faerun, and her anger is is as boundless as his power. Tangled Webs by Elaine Cunningham. It's our girl. Starlight and Shadows number two. I like the artwork on the front. I like her hair. And I don't know who this caveman is. And she's got capital knockers. This was copywritten in 1996 by TSR Incorporated and then republished in 2003. I guess. Exiled from her home, the beautiful dark elf Lyriel Bainry wanders the surface world with her companion Theodore. But even far from the dark haunts of Menzo Baranzan? Menzo Baranzan? Yeah, Menzo Baranzan. Okay. 
She's not safe from the vengeance of her arch enemy. Even as she and her friends sail the dangerous seas of the Sword Coast, a drow priestess plots a terrible fate for them. And in the depths of the earth, the Spider Queen Lolf weaves her own webs of terror and treachery. We have a quote here from Troy Denning. Elaine is one of my favorite authors. Nobody sets a mood like she does, and her characters never fail to delight. I bet Elaine writes sexy shit. Now we have Daughter of the Drow, Forgotten Realms by Elaine Cunningham. Starlight and Shadows number one. So you do have one, two, and three. Okay, so I recognize this this girl because of her hairdo. And someone must have done different artwork because if that's Fyodor, he's looking way better in book number one than book number two. Published in 1995, TSR Incorporated, and then republished in 2003 by Wizards of the Coast. Beautiful as she is, deadly, Lyriel Bainry flits through the shadows of Menzo Baranzapam. No. Menzo Baranz... Menzo Baranzan. Fuck yeah. Uh, City of the Dark Elves. Amid treachery and murder that are the dr- uh, that are the drow's daily fare, she feels something calling to her. Something beyond this dusky world far removed from the sun. Yet she ventures towards the surface and lands of light. Enemies pursue her unceasingly. And the one enemy may offer her the only hope of salvation. There's a spider on the back. R.A. Salvatore says, I've been a fan of Elaine Cunningham since I read Elf Shadow because of her lyrical writing style. The Last Mythal, Book 2. Farthest Reach by Richard Baker. A New York Times best-selling author of Condemnation. But looking at the at the outfit, she's got wings, but it's kind of like this weird... I guess it's armor, so it's okay if it says it's pukey color. Fires of hatred, vengeance, lies, and ambition burn in Cormanthor. Saria Dlargragath. Dlargragath. Dlargragath? These names, man. Let me try again. Saria Dlargragath. <laughs> I can't. I don't know. Say it. Dlar Dragoth. Dlar Dragoth has gone to ground in the ruins of Mithdrenor, seething, seething with hatred for the elves she thought would be easier to defeat. Malkazid has been summoned from the outer plains to serve House Dlar Dragoth. Oh my god, that word. But that but his servant won't rest until he's become the master. Mithranor is a symbol of the elves' greatest failure, but can it one day rise again as their greatest victory? The New York Times best-selling author, Richard Baker, continues an epic trilogy that will redefine the elves of Faerun. This was published in 2005 by Wizards of the Coast Incorporated. The Temptation of Elminster, ooh, by Ed Greenwood. Okay, she's looking hot. That's a really good look on her. Is that Elminster? He looks so different every single time, and he looks like he has no neck. Reminds me of Lord Farquaad. Yeah, so this must be when he's, like, I don't know. A young adult? Yeah, you're like your 30s, maybe, something like that. Because some of them take place when he's a kid, some of them's been a teenager, and then adult, and then old, like, old mage dude. Okay. I like the cover. It reminds me of the 90s, so let's see when this was published. Do-do-do. Ah, 1998. Mm-hmm. TSR Incorporated, and then republished in 2003. Wizards of the Coast Incorporated. All right. How do you tempt an archmage who has everything? Wouldn't I like to know? From a dark and dusty tomb, Elminster emerges, seeking the guidance of Mistra, and finds only silence. He's drawn into the clutches of a mysterious and sinister Lady of Shadows. The path he takes will lead to a realm's shaking confrontation where Elminster has to make the most important choice of his long life. Whatever he decides, the realms will be forever changed. Dot, dot, dot. Wow, no pressure, Elminster. This concludes the first edition of Dirty Dane Looks at Books, featuring Chloe. And there's more Forgotten Realms books to come, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching. <laughs>